Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the 26th in a series of video tutorials for Unity 5. So this episode we're going to be carrying on with our saving and loading system that we've been building in the past few episodes. And we're going to be working mainly in the main area of the game, which is area 001. Now the idea of what I want to do in this episode is I want to be able to build a quick script that will let us load our game and when we have selected load it will put our player in the position we save at as well as not activate our starting objects. Firstly I'm going to go to our first person controller so I'm going to double click him so we can go straight to him and we need to create uh, a script so head into scripts folder right click create script and let's call this area 001 loader and let's open that up in mono develop or visual studio or whichever makes no difference so this script we're going to be using um, quite a few variables because we need to define where our player is we also need um, to import the loaded code that we created in our uh, saving the game which is this here and we also need to create a few variables for the various objects that will start if we pressed new game. So as always, delete everything we have. And let's start with the player as the variable. So var player. And that's going to be game object. Oh, forgot the uh, semicolon at the end there. Next variable is going to be the starting script. So it's going to be, I think it's, is it this object that we've had? Um, it's the object that starts. So it's this one in this case. So var, and it's going to be starting script. That's game object. And the next variable is going to be um, the village text box. So in this case, as we were walking along here, there is a text box, just a rather a trigger for a text box just over here to say there is a village. So we need to deactivate that because by the time we've saved this game, we've already passed that in our game. So var, let's call it village box. It's going to be game object, semicolon. Now, the next couple are going to be the X, Y, and Z coordinates that we're going to use to place our player in this new in this loaded game. So I'm just going to go really simple and go var player X, and that's going to be float var player Y. Again, that's going to be a float and var player Z. Once again, a float. So before we go any further, I want to get the actual coordinates of where we're going to place our player when we load the game. So make sure you have your first person controller selected. Let's press play. And as we head over here, or when it kind of loads up, so let's head over this way. And let's make our way to where he asks about the box. And that's fine. So our saving point is going to be about here. So over here you can see the position that we are currently at. I'm just going to mute that so as you can hear me. So we're at 16.2, 4.8 and minus 8.1. So let's put these coordinates into our script. So let's copy that first one head into our script, so player x float equals, let's put that number, next let's do our y value, so once again equals and then the number and then lastly copy back into the script equals and then the number and let's stop. So next thing we need to do is quickly just um, determine which was a box we need to stop. 
because I cannot actually remember which one it is. I think it's this one, isn't it? The cube. So just to double check, the script that's attached to this cube is exit wood. And it probably would have been a good idea to actually rename this correctly. So I'm just going to call this 002 exit, oops, come back to the start there, wood. And this game object, um, I'm not quite sure what we attached to that one. I'm just going to remove that script and just see what happens. I think that may have been while I was test testing a couple of things, to be honest. Yes, so it's going to be these two, I believe. So let me just quickly check this script just to make sure this is the correct one, the correct object to disable. Uh, yes, it is. So what we're going to do now is in our loader, we need to make another variable, which is going to be the loaded code. So I'm just going to leave a line there. Var loaded code. That's going to be a string. Remember, that's a capital S right there. And the last code we're going to need is going to be this, uh, where we've got the active quest is exit the wood. So where we need, where we have this exit the wood, if I recall correctly, we have our active quest at this point in the game as reach the village. So we need to update this quest status. So heading back to this script, Let's have var, let's keep it uniform. Let's have quest status, also game object. Okay, so the function we're going to use is going to be a start function because we only want all of this to run just the once when we load this game up. So function, start, open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to check, or rather, we need to make our loaded code equal to the actual code that we've saved in our save file. So to do that, we need to do loaded code is equal. And we need to go to our load and new script, and we need to reference the global load string. So we need to put load and new dot global load. So load and new dot global load semicolon next thing we need to do is we need to make an if statement to say is the loaded code equals to whatever is in our save file in this case saving the game so if open bracket loaded code double equal sign there remember it's equal to just make sure we are typing the right thing here. Saving the game, all one word. Saving the game. Close bracket, open curly bracket. So if it is equal to that, we perform the following. So the player dot transform dot position equals, and we're going to do vector three open bracket, we need to define these points here. So we can do player x comma, player y comma, player z, close bracket, semicolon. Next thing we need to do is we need to disable the starting script and the village box. So starting script dot set active false, and village box dot set active in brackets false. And the final thing we need to do is we're going to use um, the same line of code we have just here. So quest status dot get component dot text blah 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 blah. So we can copy that line from your exit wood and place it into your area 001 loader. Because don't forget, we also have a, a variable here called quest status. So once you've done that, you can then close that if statement and then close the function because that's pretty much all there is to it. We'll be doing a little bit more in this tutorial because there's a few little things we need to modify in other places too. 
but this is the basis of how it'll work. So let's save that script, head back into Unity, and let's just have a quick think about our script there, that's fine. So go to Game Object, Create Empty, and let's call this object Area 001 underscore loading. So then we need to drag and drop the script we've just written, which is, um, I forgot what we've called it. What do we call it? We call it area 001 loader. So it's um, this one just here. Sorry, I went a bit mad for a second there. So drag and drop this script onto the game object. And as you can see, we've got the uh, game objects waiting to be input. So the player, let's drag and drop. Starting script, which is this one onto there. Village box, which is this one. And finally, the quest status, which is in our canvas. Quest box and that. And let's save that right there. So because, or rather when we press play, because we have this in our text file, it will act as though it's loading what we've done. So rather than start from the other side of the woods, we'll start here. So let's press play. And that's not quite worked as I intended, because I've just realized one thing. We've got to do it from the main menu, title screen. Because that title screen actually imports. It's a school by error on my part there. Silly me. So we go, go to the title screen, press play. And actually, it will work when we press load game. Straight in there. So you can see it's actually loaded our position. So we've not got that text box to say uh, to get out of the wood. We've also not got the text box that says um, there's a village over there. However, the one fatal flaw to this at the moment is when we press play, we've established that load game works. However, if we press new game, it may for you put you in that loading position. Luckily, it hasn't worked for me. However, I'm going to show you how to get around that by when you press new game. So if we go to our script, which is, um, I think it's, yeah, it's loading new, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one we've been using. What you may need to do is you may need to put in global load is equal to blank on new game. So just to be sure, it, like I say, it may not happen to you, but if it does, it has happened to me during testing, and that's why I'm running through it now, because I do test or try to test every episode before I record, so as everything goes smoothly. Obviously, Unity being temperamental at times and me being a bit silly sometimes, things may not always go to plan. So as I say, during testing, clicking on new game actually loaded the game itself. But the workaround for it is really easy. All you do is you just need to uh, oops, not bar. You need to do global load equals double quote semicolon and save. So as I say, the reason that's happened is because occasionally it depends how you do this load game function or how you bring in this um, data within the file name. If you bring it in too soon, it'll always assume that it's been loaded rather than clicked on new game. So hopefully everything should actually work just fine now. So when press play, we've established that new game works for me, even though it may not for you, but as I say, that line of code will work. New game brings in the new game, even though we still have that in our save file. And let's double check our load game works. And it should do, no problem. Now, one thing to note, let's change that to saving the gam rather than game. Let's click on save, press play. Not quite sure if this is going to work. I think it. Th this should actually start a new game, even though we've pressed load game. The reason being is because obviously 
we have the script which in our uh, main scene which is looking for data called save the game and ours only says save the gam. However we click load game and yet we started a new game. So this brings me to the end of this tutorial but it also brings me to what we're going to do next tutorial. So next tutorial we're going to fix that to say no valid save data if there is no data which is the Unity application is expecting. So if there's gobbledygook in your save file and you press load game, but that means nothing to Unity, we want a little message to say save isn't valid. And we'll also be creating uh, some more GUI, um, mainly to pick up our weapon and also a save point for the game. So just as a quick example, um, when we're in the game, and we're over here, let's say we've gone really far, and there's a save point here. We want to be able to click our save point, and then what that will do is it will save our game for us, as you would expect at a save point. But then when we load, it loads us at that save point. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing next episode. I think someone also asked me how do you start the game with no weapon, but you want to pick up a weapon. I'll be covering that in the next episode as well. So, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.